What is going on guys? Wiser here bringing you some of the recaps of the most recent wars for Invicta. Um at a couple interesting matchups. One of uh one of the first recap is um against this Taiwanese clan. They gave it their best. Uh wasn't too crazy, but some really nice attacks in there. And then uh the other one here is a missed arranged war where Invicta matched up against Spartan's Legacy randomly. Was uh, a pretty good match overall. <clears throat> so we're gonna check out those two wars right now. Start off just uh, quickly with this uh war against this level. 11 tie clan uh, you know these guys gave it their best 75 80 attacks they didn't give up <clears throat> but mostly two star heroes struggled on the nines kind of all the way down and Invicta did a really good job getting everything uh, cleaned up up top a couple nice uh, town hall 10 attacks in there and then missed a couple of the nines so that was a bit concerning um, but was a really big war here um, 40 man war actually uh just realized that so they must have had i wonder who's at the bottom here yeah they got some uh some guys minis in there but no sadder eris hmm anyhow uh crazy 40 man war because uh invicta put up a good show 107 stars <clears throat> just a few of those nines in there four they needed five they had to clean up uh, so that's tough, but uh, in a war like this, it's good to get some practice up top as well. So uh, let's just jump right in here. We're going to start off on what? Number 20. Lime Killer going in. Good. Oh, yes, that's right. <clears throat> I had to start off this recap with a, uh, a standard Shattered Lalo, one of my favorite attacks. Uh, the idea here, right, and then the, the whole uh, base building breakdown blunder of this attack is the centralized queen. She's standing in between all these air defense. You can kind of pick almost any angle you come in, and there's a good chance you're going to get to air defense. Now, with that being said, Lime Killer does not get both air defense here. Um, but that's how strong this attack can be when you're getting the defensive queen, the CC, and an air defense in the process you can still get away sometimes with good loon deployment and good spell deployment with only three lava hounds for three air defense as lime killer ends up doing here so poison goes down right tinker the cc troops and the queen at the same time uh you know the, his queen's in there now under the rage just busting up the buildings but uh, i'm surprised she's not locked onto that dragon but there she goes down goes the dragon finally um that's probably why, because she didn't lock onto that. If she had locked onto that dragon, it didn't do all that damage there, even though it was under the poison. See, there's only a sliver of health left on that uh, air defense. It would have went down. Anyhow, bunch of balloons coming in now, right? First Lava, Hound is, uh, lava Hounds are in. And that first air defense uh, does lose one to a mine fairly quickly, but still has the max one uh, now tanking. Sends in hound number three on the next air defense. Rages are down, pushing everything across. Like wait, the way the base is set up, because it's kind of symmetrical, if you cut off a chunk, there's only one direction that your balloons are going to feed. And it's um, in this case, it's the counterclockwise rotation he's getting going here. <clears throat> balloons are under rage. Get over to that air defense. Now there's only one to go and still has a lava hound. Oh, the lava hound just burst. My bad. Um, so starts losing some of these balloons quickly. But remember, there's only a sliver of health on this air defense. Boom, couple crashes, take it down, see you later. Pops all over the base. The queen is in there doing cleanup as well. This de base is definitely done for. Archer tower is about to go down. Queen jumps in, takes care of it before the balloons even get there. Beautiful. Treat in the bag for the lime. Right, let's jump on up to number 12. We got butt fada. <clears throat> so Futter brings a um, single jump, eight Valks, right? Um, Govaho here, uh, Shattered Govaho. <clears throat> Drops that first golem in. Maybe it doesn't. It's got to be a second golem. Got to be. Maybe it's not. Maybe that's more Valks. We're going to find out in one second. I swear it was a Shattered. Because that first golem's almost uh, almost done for. But looks like the CC is being saved for later. Maybe it's even hogs. Who? <laughs> Anyhow, all the Valks are in. Um, what I was going to comment about this base was you see this right here. There's this dead zone. And th I've talked about this before about if it's going to be a dead zone, make it a dead zone. Because realistically, this dead zone kind of could work. You could keep Valks and keep a whole bunch of stuff away from these two compartments with that dead zone. Because where the, the look at where this jump is placed, right in the middle. So if this actually was a dead zone, the Valks are going to go up and to the right 
and kind of yeah they'll, they'll still maybe get up into this compartment but you're going to keep this kind of section safe and that would be the idea of, of a, the dead zone however with these quad teslas in here right behind the queen chamber namely any sort of kill squad is going to end up taking that out right like when i plan my attacks i look at where i'm entering and i kind of take out the chunk that i figure my kill squad is going to get that chunk would definitely be included in there and you're going to end up seeing here the valks just shred through these Teslas. King is in there, still has full health, ability untouched, and he's gonna get just insane value, right? Those Valks are still in there, start sprinkling the hogs in now and all these outer defenses. Heal goes down, helps kind of keep these hogs going through this compartment here, right? That was not connected to the Valks. King's in there, right? Queen's in there, sorry, taking down that Expo. King's in there doing tanking, starts sending in more hogs now in from the other side. So yeah, it was Max Hogs in the CC. Finally, they come out, uses them at the end. One more heal to go. It's a few Hogs to trigger that DGB, but the rest of them here are safe. Standing under the heal, and this base is definitely done for. Down goes the cannon, down goes the mortar. Good old Lava Hound standing there. Really not doing much against those Hogs. Love it. Tree in the bag for Futter. And move it on up, move it on up, TH10. So Alpha going in on this uh, very new Town Hall 10. Um, really like the idea here, right? I mean, obviously right now you're going to see a lot of this, Town Hall 10 versus Town Hall 10. It's just the it's just the attack, the way the troops are, right? That's how it's getting done right now. Uh, surprised we haven't seen any more nerfs to them yet because I still think they're not quite there. But I do overall like the idea of the Valkyries being a very predominant Town Hall 10 troop. And they do nerf them. I hope that it's not too much because what I'm finding right now is, you know, obviously the game transisted with Town Hall 11. Well, that meant that they needed to really start to create what Town Hall 9 and 10 used to have now with Town Hall 10 and Town Hall 11. So they sort of need a troop that, I mean, it shouldn't be maybe as mindless is, is the only way I can think of it. Because it's, it's just, it's easy. It's really easy to get really high percentage two-star, if not three-star attacks at Town Hall 10 using Max Falks. And overall, I don't think there's anything necessarily wrong with that. I just don't think the balance and the uh, skill level required to do so uh, is quite there yet. And um, hopefully they're looking into that. So a little bit of a wall breaker here for Alpha. But the Queen Walk was going splendidly. Gi Giants finally beat through the wall. King is going to go in behind, and then here comes the Valk Parade, right? Love using that little breadcrumb alpha. Nice job. Just purposely, right, lock the Valks onto that gold mine. Next place to go is this compartment. Jump spell down. They're going to just be funneled directly to this first Inferno, and that's the best thing about the Valks. That's kind of the skill. That's, that's, that's the plan, right? How do you funnel them onto the Infernos without them dying before they get there? And... That's what it comes down to. And it's just a little too easy to do that. But that's something to think about with Town Hall 10 base building, which I do want to mention. I'm getting together this afternoon and not only doing another Slay My Base with Caddick, like within the next 15 minutes, literally as soon as I'm doing this recap. And on top of that, we are getting together with uh, 2.0's new uh, Town Hall 10 War General, Dirty Italian. And we are going to discuss Town Hall 10 base building. We're getting some information together. We're finally there. So uh, look forward to that stuff, guys. It is coming. But as you can see, Alpha nailed this beautiful attack, my friend. Tree stars in the bag. Mm-hmm. Do have another one for you. Nina. 13 Valkyries in this attack. So again, a very similar idea, right? But so look at this base, right? You're breaking this down. You want to get your mount, your Valks to this, this core. Because look at this core. Three Expos. You know there's Teslas in there. I love this little earthquake. But Nina, if you had just dropped it more on the Archer Queen pad, you still you would have got all the Expos in both Infernos. Just a thought if you're going to do that. But whatever. Soften all that stuff up. Queen Charge is kind of going in here. Wall Breakers are in and successful. <clears throat> so this queen's just going to kind of walk her way into this stuff, um, take out this section of compartment, and I believe she's creating the funnel. Forget this attack. Da -da -da. 
Yeah. So here comes uh, here come the Giants. She's basically just making sure that the Valkyries, when the jumps ball goes down over here, do not have anything to wander up and around. They're going to go straight up into this core. They're going to take out this compartment. Everything's going to go right into that core now. All the Valks are in. Inferno Towers lock on. All these Expos are now locking on, but everything's in on top. So free spell goes down, taking care of everything. And look at this. The core is dead. And the walls, the lava wall behind the core is dead before the free spell even wore off. Like, just ridiculous. Rage, rage, freeze. <laughs> like, Valks just melted that core. Absolutely ridiculous. <laughs> Fast forward this a little bit. Got a lot of replays to show. <laughs> it's just hilarious. Obviously, once that core is dead, it's a tree in the bag for sure. Especially with that many troops remaining after the core. Blam, blam, and tree in the bag. Nice job, Nina. Mm -mm -mm -mm. all right so good war <clears throat> nice job invicta uh 40 man war is kind of interesting but uh few nines missed there obviously uh that has been addressed i know you guys uh discuss that kind of stuff all the time i just kind of stay silent and invicta and soak up the splendidness which is uh everyone uh, everyone there because um you know these guys put in a lot of work and I can't stress that more, you know. Invicta just does an amazing job, and uh, yeah, can't say uh, can't say anymore. You know, I uh, got McGrady really leading the charge for the Town Hall Nines, and uh, Polly actually the Town Hall Ten War General as well does, does an awesome job organizing or uh, organizing those guys up there. So uh, can't edify you anymore. So let's jump on to this fantastic war spartans legacy if uh any of you guys out there uh know anything about the these guys you know they're a damn good clan and you know what invicta overall was happy that we put up uh that kind of fight with them uh even though it's a two-star victory for spartans legacy i'm sure they never had any worries about losing um you know still i think invicta put up a hell of a fight against these guys and um you know they had to they had to put in work right for this victory so we uh it was not a gimme by any means uh, so Invicta, uh, overall, amazing job. Uh, love you guys. Like I said, can't stress that enough. So Spartans Legacy did their diligence over here, absolutely. <clears throat> and Invicta did their diligence over here. Look at this. You know, a couple successful Town Hall 11 bullies, twos on everything else. Got a Town Hall 10 triple in there for you and a few more to show you here. So let's just jump right, right down. 23 was a miss, uh, unfortunately. That was the only one missed down there. Um Let's jump in here and check out Zeus's hit. A lot of golem attacks this war I'm finding. Um, this is honestly just a standard stone goho. So you can go the three golems. Um, very interesting base design. You know, very abstract. Um, has a decent amount of compartments. A very weird sort of neutral zone here. Um, but the uh, Zeus <laughs> Zeus really just picks this apart. Sends in three golems right into this first chamber. He's going to drop a jump spell, let everything in. So basically that takes care of this section of base. So that means you have one, two, three, four, five compartments of base to deal with. You have 22 hogs. Now you got to expect traps in here, right? So you know once everything is in this compartment with these three golems, look, you, you're now taking care of the Teslas. So there's a big piece right there, and here's another here's another uh, thought about what I was just talking about with these dead zones, right? These Teslas just suck everything. Not that your yeah, jump's gonna pass everything anyways, but um, you know, four Teslas in a row like that to a kill squad are gonna get taken down very, very, very quickly. So, um, anyways, King's in there doing his job. He's got Hogs in now all over the base with a heal. So gets that Golem to trigger that bomb all by himself. Just a fantastic job on the Hog deployment here. Sandwiches the base completely. Gets the heal spell going down just perfectly. Might have been off on this heal a little bit. He could have saved it, I think, to this point because it's very close at losing a lot of Hogs there. But ends up coming away with it. Nice job, Zeusy boy. All right, kitty. That's enough. It's a treat in the bag for Zeus. All right. 22. Old Matches. <clears throat> Bringing the old, just straight up, double jump, two heels, uh, shattered Govaho. And um, <laughs> this is like my go-to attack. Um it's so powerful even before the valks got changed it was a very 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 powerful attack and specifically against these kind of bases you know this is a not a bad base by any means however one thing you'll notice if you kind of look the lava walls draw it out for you 
these four compartments, right? One jump connects a huge part of the base. So here's my issue like with a lot, you know, you can have some, but almost all the way around the base are these very short compartments with no depth. There's just like one row of defenses and then larger compartments in the center. Well, that's almost like a ring base in a sense, um, but like the opposite of a ring base. I don't know if, I, if, if that makes sense, but see the, these jump spells connect so much. So the hogs knowingly knowing that in all these compartments there's not gonna be any bombs ends up there's a lot of teslas in this one they have to pass through but that's what the heels for and look at this compartment right you can you can tell it, there might be a bomb there but i mean realistically right the hogs are going to rip through all this Falks are up there doing cleanup it would have been nice if they stayed down on this part of the base because think about that too they would have been tanking all this stuff but he's got enough hogs to rip through it anyways just got to get that whiz tower and cannon to go down and they are good Da, da, da. Look at all these cleanup troops. Two wizards and a goblin in the bag for cleanup. Doesn't even need them because those hogs are going to finish off that mortar. No problem. <clears throat> nice job, buddy. There's tree in the bag for matches. A little swag to boot. Um, What's next? 14, 14, 14. Let's do it. LDP just been killing it for us lately in the 2.0 family. Mm. Look at this attack. This is the second time in a couple weeks I've shown an attack like this. And actually, um, it's this 5 golem, 15 wizard attack versus Town Hall 9s. I don't know exactly. I'm going to talk to one of these guys. Maybe LDP, if you watch this video, mention, send me a PM about... What made you decide to bring this attack um, about the base, right? Because obviously all our guys, you look at a base, you, you break it down and decide what attack fits best for the base. You don't just be like, I'm going to take this army versus this base, right? So LDP saw something in this base that made him say, you know what? I'm just going to bring five golems and walk them around the base with four jumps. <laughs> 15 wizards and my heroes so see how this kind of pans out. i'm gonna times do this because obviously the golems everything's really slow with this but just nice and patient another golem a few wizards five four five wizards behind jump spell connecting everything she's gonna keep that golem um moving in now joining everything up with his jump does lose uh his king there but no big deal has another golem max golem in fact in the uh cc which even at this point I might have opted for, instead of, well, tough to say, but opted for like six max hogs right now. Well, um, well uh, maybe not. He needed this last one. Unfortunately, he doesn't do, yeah, see, you see what I'm talking about? Like, if he had had six max hogs there, they'd be moving in. They would probably get over here, and then he wouldn't have needed that last jump. One heal over that compartment probably would have kept the eight hogs alive or whatever. But whatever, right? This golem ends up wandering all the way over here to this archer tower. So it works out absolutely perfectly. Ends up standing there, tanking for the queen and all this crap. All the queen. Look at all these wizards still alive. He brought 15. There's still 369. There was almost like 10 wizards still alive. Brought, brought 20 wizards. Sorry, my bad. Anyhow, very nice hit, LDP. Sexy. I'm doing a really good job for the 2.0 fam lately. Or always, I should say. All right, what's next? What's next? What was that? That was 14? All right. Got Polly J going in. Yeah, this is what I'm going to conclude this little section of video. This was our only uh, straight up, you know, either 10 versus 10 or 11 versus 11. We did have a couple of bullies, but again, not a lot to learn from those. So we see Polly J, obviously, with the Max Heroes, has uh, a bit of an advantage over this brand new uh, Town Hall 10. Um, so gonna, Paul is going to go ahead and just kind of walk into this section of base, um, take out, uh, take out a big side of the funnel. <clears throat> I believe pull out the CC troops. And then as soon as he's got the CC troops to the queen is going to enter with these Valks. And again, you look at actually the way this base is, um, it almost leaves an alleyway for Valks. Like one jump, it will just connect the two. It's not going to let them stray to the sides. So if you drop a jump right in the middle of that and send Valks in, or I guess you'd have to double break. So double jump here though, and then they'd break through the walls. I don't know, but it's just kind of like an alleyway with the two Infernos for the Valks. So um, you're going to see how this pans out in one moment. Exactly jump 
exactly where I just said. In comes a CC full of giants. He's going to end up dropping the raid spell somewhere around here. Da -da -da. Valks are now in, jumping around, smashing buildings in one shot. Going to lock on this Inferno Tower and see you later. Second jump spell is now down. There comes the rage. Going to rage all these giants, all the Valks. Look at all this stuff. Look how fast this is going to go down. See ya, see ya, see ya. Expo for like the town hall in one shot. Goodbye. Everything's just getting shredded all down this alleyway here. Everything's going to meet up here. And guess what? He's got even a handful of hogs sprinkled in on the back end. Trying to take care of some of these defenses. They end up losing out to spring traps and the bomb there. But no big deal. He's got enough Valk. Still has a giant even going. Has the full health queen with a few healers still left on her. Doing cleanup on the outside. <clears throat> no chance for this base. Da -da -da. everything meets up too that's the nice part about the end of this attack and everything meets up at the same time to deal with the last few defenses remaining here down goes the expo and a tree in the bag for Polly. nice job buddy you do a fantastic job as the uh, war general um yeah so tough war spartans legacy but uh you guys are uh, you guys are awesome over there um you know Hopefully we can uh, we can meet again and uh, maybe put up a bit better of a score. Or, uh, <clears throat> who knows? But uh, fantastic job overall, Invicta. I was proud of you guys. Uh, still, it was a night really nice, uh, really nice outcome for uh, the difficulty of the war, especially because it was random. It wasn't exactly. Uh, I'm not even sure what the town hall count was there. So Robaz and Polly. So they had 11 tens. Obviously had some new tens and. 311s versus our 411s. So we even had a bit of an advantage because we had an extra 11. 3, 6, down to 11. Down to 11. Yeah, so we did have a one town hall advantage on them even too. So um, fantastic work over there, Spartans Legacy. You guys are pimps. Uh, but I'm going to call it an afternoon here. I think Caddox ready to do the Slay My Base. So again, like I mentioned earlier in the video, look forward to that stuff, guys. Um, we're coming out with some Town Hall 10 base building stuff very, very soon. So I know a lot of you guys have been asking questions about that. Anyways, that'll do it for your wisdom from Wiser. Just trying to help you bag that next tree star. Until then. I'm